Hello again. I briefly stopped in town to visit a few shops and went into a charity shop that I don't normally go in, haven't been in for a long time, and saw this uh, machine on the ground. And it said, parts only, play not working. And I spoke to them about it and they said, yeah, it powers on, um, the various lights indicators seem to work, but the play does not engage. And I thought, okay, it's a Sony old um, free head cassette deck. Um, it must be worth something to try to fix. It's got to be worth more than £10 or 12 bucks. So I thought, okay, I'll chance it, I'll buy it, bring it home and have a look at it. So here it is. I didn't know much about this at all until I had a look a little bit further online and it seems to be the very first free head cassette deck released by Sony and possibly anywhere or by anyone else in the world. So I was quite a surprise. I've, I've been looking for a free head cassette deck for quite a long time and um, I've been looking on eBay for something obviously a bit more modern and uh, always sort of seemed to be quite pricey and uh, this one looks uh, looks pretty good. I mean obviously not the sort of style that you would necessarily go for these days but um, luckily I've got some retro um, kits. I thought yeah it's going to be worth, it's going to be worth a play isn't it? So let's have a look and see if it actually does anything. So let's get a cassette. And it just seems to lay there like that, you push it down, in it goes. So uh, the first thing to do is try rewind. So rewind looks okay, counter's going okay. Stop, forward, that seems to be moving along quite nicely. Play, no, nothing on the play. It almost seems like it's kind of locked, it's stopping me. Um, a bit like that feeling you've got actually, yeah, like when you press the record and you've got a, um, you know, a shot bought tape. So basically, you know, the record's not going to go down and um, it's that kind of feeling. So I wonder if uh, the deck has just got itself stuck over the years or maybe there are, there is an extra bout or something that isn't isn't working here. So um yeah, it looks pretty full featured though. So for for the time, unbelievably, it's got Dolby and a little light comes on for that. Um, you can set the heads up as well, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, various levels and controls and things that uh, I'm not overly uh, overly um, aware of. So um, let's let's take this apart and see if there's anything I can do to free up this play. I think that's the place to start. It actually feels very heavy in here, but very weighty. I believe it draws quite a lot of current. So there's 52 watts, which is quite a lot for a uh, cassette recorder. And uh, it's got the feeling of, of a weighty VHS video from probably 10 years later or so. A few screws to take out, so I've just done that now. And oh, it's actually looks like it's all of this wood's going to come out as well. So I've got, got to take the power out and then lift it like that. Oh my word! Look at that. That is why it's so heavy. It really is. Well, the bouts look like they're the original bouts. I guess when it's switched on, it's probably always turning the main motor. Hefty transformer over this side. Not a huge amount of dust though. So what I've done is I've got a sponge that I used to wash the car with. Just put it on this side because it's very weighty and I need to obviously keep these buttons free. So 
It's a little bit of um, give there, just a little bit. So maybe, let's see. Just trying the rewind. So this is the I'll just press the reject. I'm gonna do that. So we've got it rewinding it's forward. a bit of a hum up but I think that's just the way I've got this balanced so this looks to be the area to play this front bit could it be a solenoid or something along those lines that it's given out to ghost is some of the mechanism just jammed? Don't know in there, it looks quite right. Hmm. So just observing the mechanism when we're going uh, forward or rewind, so it does seem to be switching over fine. All the bouts seem to be running. There's a couple of switches involved. I think I'm going to have to basically take this cover off so I'm going to have to get to it from the front to see if, it, if I can make more sense what's going on in here. And this is the top side. So it's very awkward to manoeuvre. It was fairly straightforward to take out. There were some additional screws so there was, well, there was like a post that had to come out, plus two more screws, and they were on the side of the transformer. So they were on uh, this side. And uh, this is the front view. Almost looks like an old video head there, doesn't it? Quite amazing. All right, I'm going to have a little play now to see if I can determine what's stopping the play on this side. Play. Looks like it will play if the mechanism is allowed to fire this floating head assembly forward. So if I've still got a jam in here or something electronic is not firing to move this into position. Look at these little lights here shining to where the cassette is. It's incredibly engineered, but it is almost 50 years old. It's uh, almost, it's about 48 years old at the moment, I think. So inside there, there seems to be a piece of metal which looks to be limiting this transport uh, from, from this button moving downwards. So comparing it to the other ones, you can see like almost like a bit of a slant, like a, a 45 degree angle. And that seems to be fine, but it does look like there's something physically in a position that shouldn't be there and that's stopping it. So I've got some good news here. I've been able to get the play working and it was a combination of things. So you see the hairdryer on the floor. I use hairdryer just aiming at the metal bar here to try to free up the grease because inside there was um, two bits of metal that looked as if they were one, but um, they were actually stopping the play from going down. So if I just show you 
what's happening now that's that's the stop button you can see the plays working I've actually got the play to work now I'm going to do part two of this video about this machine and that will be uh, about me testing it and trying some uh, blank tapes and seeing what sort of results I get from it so that's what I aim to do in part two so that will be the more um, technical bit in terms of seeing if the machine is working and whether or not the heads are good and everything which I no doubt they will be because they're made from very hard wearing uh, material but anyway um, I just thought you'd be interested to see how I got this to work I actually used a little bit of a uh, contact cleaner as well just a little bit squirted in there but I did have to use a screwdriver to kind of pry the two bits of metal apart and um, luckily I didn't have to obviously take any screws out or go down any deeper in the machine because uh, personally I don't think I would have been that happy about doing that so uh, a good result and a machine that I've been able to pick up for £10 and not really spend anything extra on it so as you can see it's playing I'm going to get some headphones into this a bit later and see if the tape speed seems okay and if I get obviously an output as well but uh, that's my next step so uh, thank you for watching I hope this has been somewhat useful to you and I shall try to do some more videos in the future bye for now